Good, 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 good. So I'm out here. Park. Oh, Lord. He has a constitution as soon as we get out here. The wonderful thing about this park is they have... Oh, her too? Going double doo-doo on me? Immediately? Well, this is healthy. All right, so either way, I'm going to use that thing to pick it up here because you got to do your deal oh do you see hexic right now went over there and high and lifted her leg like a male dog to piss over this dog's dookie that's a dominant bitch that that bitch is like 15 years old and i don't know another like 15 year old dog that looks okay but i guess what i i think you might be like two but i don't know a two-year-old dog as beautiful as hers but i don't know a like a 15 year old dog is like beautiful as good shape as this dog May I tell you, this dog has never had consistent kibble, never. She's always had the benefits of raw meat, chicken, beef, never any pork. She's had chicken feet raw. She's had meat that's been lightly cooked. Like I feed her chicken medium rare, rare. She's a dog. You don't want to cook chicken all the way through, especially chicken bones, because then that's when they brittle and it can be harmful to your dog when they digest it. So look how fantastic she looks. She gets goulash every day. And the goulash is very simple, yeah? Sometimes it's tuna based, but it's basically just water and I take over whatever appropriate leftovers I have for my meal that day. I put them in a pitcher, water. Normally I'll put a can of salmon in there, or a can of tuna in there. I mix it up, throw a little white rice in there. The five minute Insta rice works great. You throw it in there and you mix it if you have one dog, you can make enough for five days. But you do that. You mix it over their kibble. And sometimes she gets expensive kibble. Sometimes she gets the cheapest fucking kibble. Because you know what? It doesn't matter. You feed your dog that expensive kibble all the time. If that's all they fucking eat. They're not going to be as healthy as this dog. This dog got hit by a police car the night that my boy Cooter died. And guess what? They said she was going to limp forever and she didn't limp anymore. She's recently started limping, but hers is 15 and has a arthritis. And if she gets moving and is ambulatory, it stops and she doesn't limp. All right. So I got to stop. I got to go pick this poop up. I'm going to set this phone down. Hank doesn't seem all that interested in me. But, but before I go, you know what? Stick around. Uh, you don't want to miss this. I'm going to walk over there and, and get a, a really great shot of those beautiful testicles. Okay, it's done. Good, you good. What a cool, cool thing. Yeah. So... The last time I came out here, we're out here with Hazel. Yeah, and Hazel's doing fantastic, by the way. So that's gonna lead me to my next point. So this is the thing. Oh, let me get you guys that shot of those beautiful testicles. Like I promised, okay? And this story actually involves beautiful testicles. So, you know, I, I had that doodle hazel in with me for training. Hi, handsome. Good, good, good. Look at those beautiful testicles. Hey, handsome. I'm trying to get, get a good look at those beauties. Look mm. at that, those beauties. Wow, they're beautiful, Bubba. I'm, oh my God, look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He needs to be on TikTok. Good, good, good. He's so thick. So either way, with Hazel, yeah? We have, um, you know, we had a situation with her where, so her mom enrolled her dog in my four-week program, okay? Good sit. But with all the dogs, you know, I like to get like four full weeks of training. You can see me talking about this with her at the pickup video. So it needs to be like you were a dog biting her, man. Do you see what I mean? So it looks, you'll see when she goes with my doodle Maggie, man, they're gonna bite the hell out of each other. <laughs> right, you're gonna see, so look. No, look, so look. You saying the uh-uh, all you're doing there, madam, I'm telling you the truth is, look, you're, you're creating a drama. So look. And I pinched her because I saw her snap at me. Not that she's being, yeah, she's real. Look, 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 ooh, she's real dominant, dude. 
She's listening. Oh, look, 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 no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not too. Yeah, good. Damn, she's like, like, look, like I'm here for an exorcism. <laughs> oh. So I like to have four full weeks. So this is what I do that other trainers don't do. If you pay another trainer for three weeks, it's going to be three exact weeks and they're going to do whatever it takes to have their dog perform at the level they want the dog to perform when they demo the dog for you, when they drop the dog off or you pick the dog up, okay? So that's just the way it works, shenanigans. So with me, if I have a dog in the first week or two the dog is nervous, I don't like to burden them and push myself on them because dogs like humans, if they're in a state of paranoia or uneasiness, nervous, anxious, it's difficult to learn, to absorb, to assimilate anything and everything so dogs take time to acclimate and I've always been very kind and generous to people always in fact this dog was with me for training her name is Moxie touch and start to walk straight good very good nip and turn to your left there you go perfect perfect so see you're kind of there you go perfect perfect you're doing good there you're doing good you're doing great you're doing great turn to your left Turn in on it. That's beautiful. Good job. Good. Turn towards me, please. Turn to your left. Start to slow down. 50%. Come to a stop. Apply pressure. You nailed it! <laughs> Damn it! So with this dog, I went out to her family's house for free, to her mom's house for free. Did twice for free. Did a training session. Gave her the gifts to the kingdom, the coin of heaven. You do these things and your dog will never need to come with me for training. In fact, I even told her, hey man, if your dog comes out, if you come out for three classes, every three classes, I'll give you three days of boarding time so that her dog could have come and enjoyed the benefits of a board and train program of being surrounded by my wonderful pack of training dogs for free. And it would have been mutually beneficial because when she would come out to work those dogs, I would in turn handle her dog while she handled other dogs. Good down, baby. It's so beneficial. But either way, t life gets in the way. This is the thing, okay, is that I have not had a... a, a much success having the kind of customers that are willing to come out to classless like Hank's mom and M. They're very willing to come out to classes. Okay. Shit. Damn. And if you try to grab her or touch her in this situation, does she get mad with you? Really like yeah. Like back, and she just like does this. Like, now you, you kind of. And she even turned the TV off. Yeah, that was awesome. She does that. Now this place here, I rather like this place. My biggest problem with them is that they're what I would consider false advertising. There's no way they have very much success with reactive dogs like Hank, and obviously it didn't do anything to curb what was coming with this gentleman's dog. This is one of the places that really pisses me off. I'm sure they have very capable, wonderful people working for them and trainers, but this is complete false advertising. This is getting it done right the first time by one of our highly trained professionals. Bullshit. Then how come Robert's dog is still very, very active? Why is he having to reach out to me? Because you guys are unwilling to help him unless he pays you a tremendous fee. This is one of those bullshit ass places that has offered me jobs and I turned them down because I wouldn't be able to live with myself to charge somebody damn near $3,000 to keep their dog for two weeks and then put an e-collar on them. I don't agree with. I don't have any issue with the e-collar, but I disagree with two weeks and putting an e-collar on dog. Fuck that. They drive from Florida to come out to a fucking class, but you're not built like them probably. Okay. They are the few, you know, Jesus healed 10 and only one came back to thank him. Thaddeus, that's the spirit of Thaddeus. He's taking another poop? I don't, that's the spirit of Thaddeus, because he gives a shit, see? He gives a shit, at least he gives a shit. Like his mom, she gives a shit. Like Hazel's mom, she gives a shit. So either way, Hazel was with me, and Hazel really didn't need any acclimation time, but Hazel was the most difficult doodle I had met since this one. And the problem with Hazel is Hazel is probably smarter than this one. Hazel is a brilliant dog. Good news is that her mom had already laid a very good foundation. The only misstep would have been taking the dog to the Petco training because there they'll teach the dog to shake, high five, roll over, and that just teaches your dog how to communicate through tantrums, petulance. 
So on my hands, I had a dog that was beautiful, smart, understood some commands already, but was petulant and tantrum prone. <laughs> right? So either way, and he loves her by the way, and I love her too. So with beautiful Hazel, the first week that Hazel was there, Hazel was pissing all the dogs off. So the dogs were picking, like standing their ground. Good down, baby, which is the right thing to do. Other male dogs expressed their dominance on her by mounting her. So Hazel's mom got upset because her family was watching my Instagram stories. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, you should be. This is where she saw that drama unfold. So she messaged me and said, hey, I don't like the fact that the dogs are, you know, mounting my dog. And I explained to her that it wasn't sexual. She didn't want her dog to have sex. Okay, so I said, listen, I understand that's not sexual. You know, not, not even getting pregnant or anything like that. Just, you know. So I said, it's, it's, it's nothing sexual, it's the way dogs communicate. It is an act of communication and she needs this. I tell you, more than any other dog, your dog needs it. That's why I even allow it. She said she just wanted, if the dogs weren't going to be supervised, she didn't necessarily think her dog should be with us. So then I said, and she was very kind. And I said, well, yeah, you need to you know, pick her up then. So then she started crying and I started crying. She said, yeah, I'm going to pick her up. Good sit. She came to her senses messaged me and said, you know what, I'm going to leave her in there. She was a referral from Kylo. If you haven't already watched Kylo's video, you should. All right, so we're going to test the dog and see how the dog reacts when I walk up to the owner's car. More than likely, it's going to freak out. Beautiful. Okay. So you see, how you doing? Oh, he's gorgeous. But he's hot. He's hot, yeah? He's angry, huh? He's hot, man, he's gorgeous. Listen, we're, he's beautiful I, and you know i breed corsos man i don't just throw that around it's a gorgeous animal he's big too he's hot <laughs> thank you so much joseph for the blessing so she thought it over and came to her senses and was rational she's just very she's a go-getter she's you're probably not built like her okay she's an overachiever like hank's mom overachieving like my dog's here overachievers he's an overachiever hell okay so either way so she decided that she was going to leave Hazel with me. And even though she paid for a four week program, Hazel maybe stayed eight or nine weeks. I don't remember. I didn't charge her any extra. In fact, I thanked her for her patience. And may I tell you, if I had more customers like Hazel's mom, I would be so happy. I would have kept my prices at the price point good down, my love, that they were at. I mean, she's so nice. She's been so understanding. She just had faith. You know, with Moxie's mom, you know, Moxie's mom said that she had faith. I have faith. I trust the process. But every day she's messaging me or every other day messaging me, questioning whether or not I've had any time to spend with her dog and train her dog. Of course I have. <laughs> it's ridiculous that you free to think otherwise. You know, then I realized that when you talk to people that have what I'm going to call a poverty mindset, they'll ask you things like, hey, have you had a chance to work with my dog yet? Of course I have. You paid me for it. I tasked myself and burdened myself with it. And may I tell you, you know, I gave her a $3,000 program for like $1,500. Ridiculous. I'm not doing that shit again. I'm stupid for that. Hey, Moxie. Hi, baby. Starting to come out, huh? Yeah, starting to get goofy. Her starting to get the wiggles. Oh, her jumping at me. Her so anyways, I'm prepared to give this dog 8, 9, 10, 12, 14. I'm thinking this dog's going to need 13 weeks, okay? She paid 1500 So anyways, so, you know, I realized something. Like, dude, at the end of the day, you know, like, when I talk to people that are, like, I'm, for lack of a better term, wealthy, well-off, successful. I don't want to say successful because, listen, I'm successful. I'm the most successful kind of course trainer in the country, potentially in the world. I'm just not wealthy. I'm about to be wealthy, though. Invest in me. Put your money in me. Trust me. I'm the real fucking deal. Merwin Valderamos. The dog messiah. The lover of dogs and persons, may I tell you. And I'm sent. And I'm doing a new thing. But people are going to pay for this new thing. Because there's tremendous benefits for this new thing. So as I was saying. You know, she's wonderful. Her dog stayed. So Moxie's mom. You know, would ask me these kind of questions. So let me tell you the way that a successful wealthy person would ask me things yeah instead of saying have you had any time to work with my dog they would say hey how has my dog done when you've taken her to the dog park so it puts the 
they act as if they, they of course you've done you've done that with my dog thank you whether i've seen it or not i trust that you have done that thank you and see in an office setting if you have somebody who's lacking phrasing it that way puts the strike the attention on them and you don't look like the bad guy you look like the bad guy you walk up to somebody and say hey did you ever do that and you're like he a little faith so either way with moxie's mom i kicked her out of the program and despite what friends attorneys people that are willing to go to court for me for free what a blessing said to me i still refunded her all of but 200 dollars and then even then, she kept pestering me about when the refund, and I did everything to expedite it. Go away. She's probably not watching this, because I blocked her on all the things. Fuck that. So I'm gonna say one other thing, okay? If you're a fan and you watch my Instagram, my YouTube, or TikTok, I have three different media platforms, and I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm ashamed to say this, but I'm better, I am more well known and higher regarded for my acts of humanity than my dog training acumen. Sir, how much you want for that bag of cans? You selling it, aren't you? Yes, sir. Awesome. What's your name, buddy? Jeremy. Uh, what state? Well, I'm, I'm from Houston, man. What, where am I at right now? Marshall? Marshall, Texas. I saw your dog. My name is Erwin Malderamos. I'm the dog messiah, lover of dogs and persons, sir. I love dogs. And I saw you That's over there right. by the Sonic and you were hugging and kissing him. Yeah. Is it a male or a female? Awesome. I got you and him a sandwich, a, bur a, 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 a burrito. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Here, sir. Bless you. Thank you. I'm, I, got, I got another one for you. Look, I got a burrito. I got the biggest fucking burrito they can make for you and for him. Thank now, let's you, talk man. about some cans. You're a businessman, aren't you? <laughs> I speak American capitalism, sir. Check this out. Hey, Bubba, I got a bag of shit on me. Look, if you'll take it, sir, I have a leash for you. If you'll take it, okay? Hi, handsome. And I'm Actually, I'm on my way to Tennessee to pick up a dog, okay? So I'm so thankful that I bumped into you. I got you some water. It's got alkaline in it, sir. I bought him some shit too. There's that there's that bully stick and there's rawhide. Okay. Will you use that leash, sir? If I leave it for you, yes, I will. you will. Okay. I, I believe you. Okay. Listen, sir. So how much do you want for this? You have copper in there, yeah? Yes, sir. Man, what a beauty. A couple wow. How, what do you think? What do you think? What, what do you think is a good price for that, sir? Be honest uh, with me. Copper, bro. I get six bucks and can. Will you take 40 for it, sir? Yes, sir. There you go, bam. But fuck, I'm on my way to Tennessee. So guess what? I'm not gonna be able to take it with me, sir. You don't want it? You know what, I'm not gonna be able to take it with me. But a deal's a deal, sir. It, do you think you can find somebody else? Can you find a place to sell it? And keep that money? You want me to sell it? And keep the money? For me? Yeah, you're the one doing all the hard work, finding a place to sell it, buy it. Uh, Sounds like a deal? If you're willing to do that, I'm willing to do it, yes? Yes, sir. Okay, so listen, I got a burrito in there for him too, yeah? You give it to him? Yes, He's gonna love that shit. Look, here's another $40 for you, sir. Really? Bless you, yes? Yes, for sure. Listen, bless you. My name is Erwin Valderamos. I'm the lover of dogs and persons. I, I love your dog, and may I tell you, sir, uh, I, I want you to understand something, yes? The universe loves you, yeah? I, I tell you the truth, sir. Regardless of what's happening in life, the people pay me to talk to me about life. More people pay me to talk to me about their life and get life advice from me than even to talk about dogs. How ridiculous is that? For this I was born. For this I came into the world and I'm going to show you. I'm here. The reality of it is this. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and pause the bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload another video, but listen, if you follow me, if you watch, if you subscribe, if you comment, if you like, please understand this, you are hurting me if you reach out to me and ask me for free advice. I give so much of myself already on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. You know when I go out and I give somebody randomly $40, I get flooded with requests from people. I had to turn my request in off. People send me requests for a thousand, send me a thousand dollars, you just seem like a wonderful person. And then if I decline it, they message me personally and call me a fucking fake, a fraud, they're gonna expose me, man, fuck people. I'm still the lover of dogs and persons, but people are hard to love. Dogs are easy to love. I love people the way people love dogs. People see me with this dog, they look at me, they might grimace, but when they look at him, they smile. 
he automatically has their favor. People have my favor. They lose my favor. So don't lose my favor. Or go away. Unsubscribe. Unfollow. Don't watch me. Talk shit about me. Go on Yelp and make negative reviews about me like other people have done. Fuck them. You know why? Because ultimately, if you reach out to me and you ask me for free advice, I am inclined. I'm altruistic by nature. I'm going to want to sit down and help you. But every, if I help you, it hurts me because then that doesn't translate into dollars. So let me explain. I've been looking for investors and benefactors to keep myself to rise, to get to the next level that I know I'm supposed to be at. I feel it. But it's been impossible because when I show them my numbers, when I show them, man, I get like 90 messages a day throughout, you know, email, TikTok, Instagram, everything, my personal phone and everything. You know, this number, that's right here, that number, okay? But if people reach out to me and they ask me for free advice and then whoever is managing my information or, or, or my data at that time says, hey, you know, he would love to help you for $30. He'll take an hour with you. And may I tell you, a lot of times it's going to be more than an hour because I'll, I'll just be so nice to you. And he would love to talk to you and he'll be able to help you all with all of your questions. So a lot of times those people get butt hurt and get upset, okay? So even if you don't get butt hurt, if you reach out to me and do not have $30 to invest in an hour talking to me, don't reach out to me. Be silent, be still. Reach out to me in other ways. Share, like, subscribe, follow. It costs me money to do this. My time and my investment, and everything is an investment. My time and my money is an investment. Thank you for investing time watching this video and hearing me rant, but I tell you, every day I think about deleting this shit, so stick around to see if I fail. Especially if you hate me, subscribe. Because you'll see. I don't give a fuck. I, I have other investments that are coming. And I'm going to make it happen. Trust me. Bless you all. Good, 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 good. So be angry, but sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed. But when they do it, they are intense in the doing. If you are lukewarm, you're told in scripture, I'll spew you out. Would that you're either hot or cold. But because that you are lukewarm, I will spew you out. You can't do anything if you're lukewarm. You must be intense about it. No matter what you want, but you must be intense about it. Now that is going to the silence.